You might know, some of you, that last year for Heritage Week I created the Cork Jewish Culture Virtual Walk, which was a short film and a web page about the Cork Jewish history and culture. So after that, um, I was contacted by loads of people, I don't know, more than 100, some who were born in Cork, some who had ancestors from Cork, or some who just had an interest in the Jewish history of Cork. So some of those people are here today and uh, are going to be presenting later on. Um, so I'm just really happy to welcome you all. Today you're going to hear stories from people who grew up in Cork. You're going to hear music from Cork's Jewish past and present. is the Cork Jewish Times from 1949, which I bought from a rare bookseller, Jonathan Fishburne in London. Just over 30 years ago in November 1918, I left Cork to take up a position in the London Custom House. It seems hardly possible to convey to the Jewish youth of present day Cork any adequate impression of the characters that made up the community of those days and the conditions under which they lived. Although even then quite a number of families had drifted into other parts of the city, the majority still lived in Hibernian buildings, Monterey Terrace, Eastville and adjoining streets, which you'll know was commonly known as Jewtown. Some idea of the community's centrality may be gleaned by the existence at that time of a Vochadic minion at 14 Eastville and of three or four Jewish grocery shops in the same neighbourhood. Perhaps the most significant change is in the type of personality that was dominating element in the congregation. When you looked around in shul, you saw a number of elderly men, devout, grey-bearded and bearing on their lined faces the marks of a grim struggle for existence. Most of them were Talmudic scholars. They had brought with them a deep understanding and knowledge of Judaism. When they davened, they expressed the fervour of their prayers in a manner that comes only from an abiding faith. I was born in 1940 to what I call typical Jewish family in a lovely home in Woolhar Park, Douglas Road. We lived uh, on Western Road at Annival in one of the houses there. It was a wonderful childhood and certainly up to 13 it was a wonderful childhood. Uh, we had holidays every year in Tremor. Um, I went to school at Christian Brothers College. We were always very, very proud of being Jewish even in the small community. And, um, you know, most people who are hearing me are hearing probably an American accent. And uh, my, my family kid me a lot about that. But I, I, I can prove that I was from Cork by saying this. Aru from Cork, I am rude. You ate spuds, I do to you. How do you eat them? Skin and all? Do they choke you? Not at all. I suppose what we're doing is trying to um, remember the old community, but also in Lawrence's word, to give energy and time to the upkeep and organization of the community in its present form today. Yeah, our school was a mixed school, uh, very strict. For those days, I guess it was normal that we used to sit with our backs straight. We couldn't touch the back of the chair. Nobody would dare open your satchel or open your desk. Um, the surgery that my family ran, and it was also my grandparents' house, um, uh, there were four brothers and they all practiced dentistry there. And most people will remember the Schurz as uh, the dentists of Cork. My father was Arthur Elian, and my mother Betty Mushat from Dublin who was the first Jewish woman solicitor to qualify in Trinity College. Uh, except for the few Jewish friends that I had, like Gail Hurwitz, Marion Wheeler, and sure, there were very few. Already in the 1940s, 50s, I had very few Jewish girl friends. Most of my friends were either Protestants from my school or my Catholic neighbors. 
I had great Irish friends in, in Cork. And of course, we had wonderful Jewish family. Um, the Elians were very close, uh, the Jacksons, um, etc. My best friends were non-Jewish and Catholic and Protestant um, and were so respectful of, of us, of our culture, as we were of their cultures. Um, we got on as though there was no difference between us. Then we had Bene Akiva and we all joined up from the smallest to the little, the smallest to the biggest. David Jackson started when he came back from Israel. And it was marvelous. And that's, I guess, when I realized that I wouldn't be staying in Cork and realized I would be going to Israel at some stage. And that is exactly what happened. I've lived in Israel now for 57 years. Um, my parents wanted me to have um, a, a Jewish education and decided to send me to Carmel College, which is in London, just north of London. And I left at the age of 13, just after my bar mitzvah. Uh, which I had in Cork. Uh we were on the beach from morning till night. Uh, and you know, and that's the sandcastle further up. And we had the Mary's and we had the ice cream. I think the first time we had wafer for ice cream, I think, was in New York. I remember. And I didn't know how to swim yet. So my father said one day, Go into the water here. Here are water wings. We had water wings in those days. I put the water wings on and bravely stepped into the waves. And of course, I was knocked down by the waves, swallowed all this water. But in five days, I knew how to swim. And from that day on, I've been almost swimming daily. So there we go. Um, I remember in particular going to show Percy Diamond's Dublin was just uplifting to this day. I've been to many shows. There aren't many as uplifting as his colony dray. That was actually the center of our life. And that's where we used to smell the bread on Yom Kippur. I know when I was quite young, the community was still thriving. And I remember the so-called Cheder was in the building next to the shore, which by that stage was like dowdy and old. And I used to hate going in there. I used to always think that a mouse would jump up on top of me. Um, and we used to have a, a teacher who came down from Dublin. One day he decided to shock at a chicken and took us all out to see him killing the, the chicken. And another time he did uh, matzah baking with us. One thing I remember in particular about the, the Jewish community was when the male voice choir came to Cork. To this day, it was the most wonderful experience. And they came to shul, they took part in the service. Um, I can remember sitting in upstairs on, in the front and being fair, blue-eyed, did not look Jewish at all. I was getting the funniest looks and they were wondering what I was doing, looking at a siddur until they found out eventually who I was. When I was quite young, the community was still thriving. Um, as Estelle reminded me today of our big Hanukkah party, I must have been about three or four and we all dressed up as candles and we had a big party afterwards. But that's really, I would say, the last big um, celebration. There were a few of us. There was um, uh, Rosalind Cohen, Sammy Cohen. There were the Rose Hills. Um, really just a few. There was Pearl Nathan. Um, I remember all the characters, Jack Livingstone, uh, Fanny Goldwater, Percy Diamond. I have the happiest memories of living in Cork. Um, and even if I go rare the times that I go back now, I still feel like a two-year-old when I get off the plane and feel so comfortable being there. So 35 years later, um, I, I, I came back to Cork uh, from Tampa. And that particular house, which had five stories with the um, uh, 
place that they make dentures at the, uh, in the basement um, had been turned into a bed and breakfast. So of course I, I decided that we had to stay there. The um, implant, I, I use that both as a dental term and another term of my father's chair in his surgery, which was now a bedroom was still there. And um, there were bulges over each of the doors uh, where they had left the mezuzahs. And I asked Claire, what, you know, it, are those mezuzahs there? And she said, I don't know what they mean, but it was something Jewish, so we thought we'd keep it. Uh, anyway, she, she cut one off one of the doors for me as a keepsake. It was really a wonderful time. The new Cork Jewish community is active and has, at the moment, Zoom services every second Friday night. And, you know, we're looking for a, a, a space that when we can get together in bigger numbers that we can have celebrations other than on zoom but you know in the meantime it's quite active and there's a website called jewishcommunity.ie and um there's quite a lot going on we'll be having some cultural events as well as religious events coming up um and jews from all denominations welcome my grandfather was the rabbi uh, he was reverend uh, joseph wallman uh between 1926 and 1937 and at the very beginning of 1927, my mother was born in Cork. My memories are really just of, of the stories from um, my parents. Blanche Woolman wrote, Daddy used to wear a clerical collar, which made him look similar to the Catholic priests. One day, a couple of Catholic girls saw him coming got down on their knees and crossed themselves, then looked up and ran off crying, oh my God, it's the rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> 